Millions believed Elvis did it. But did Michael Jackson really do it? Fake his death. Alive. Is Michael Jackson really dead? Investigative journalist Pearl Jr. uncovered the facts in the 2005 trial. Now she's uncovered the most shocking true story of our lifetime. Alive. Is Michael Jackson really dead? This promises to blow your mind. <laughs> Elbow Grease Productions in association with MichaelJacksonInsider.com presents Hi, this is Pearl Jr. with MichaelJacksonInsider.com bringing you from the courtroom inside as a credentialed media participant my notes for week number two in the People vs. Dr. Conrad Murray involuntary manslaughter trial. Now, this week concentrates on the date of the June 25th, which is supposedly the death date, to June 29th. Now we heard the full tape of Michael Jackson where he sound like a desperate drug addict with a heart of gold wanting to build the Michael Jackson's Children's Hospital and wanting to make sure that there's movie theaters and there are game rooms for the sick children. Oh, I mean bless his soul. Then we, the next day we hear about Michael Jackson, all these drugs that were not detected like no cocaine, no heroin, no oxycodone, no marijuana, no alcohol. None of that stuff was found in his system. So the next day he's not a drug addict. The following day we hear the drugs that were in his system but more concentration on them in which they were drugs prescribed by a doctor that was on site giving them to Michael Jackson and they were all sedatives to help the pop star sleep. So very, very confusing, but I think this week Michael's image has improved dramatically in the world of public opinion. Now, I want to get to the nights that Michael Jackson didn't have propofol, which was June 23rd and June 24th. He had rehearsals those two days, so the night before he was just sleeping on some lorazepam and midazolam and those type of sedatives to help him sleep. And we see him in This Is It during Fabulous because almost all of the performances in the movie This Is It were done on the 23rd and 24th. Now we're gonna talk about at least one witness. Her name is Alisa Leak, and she is the coroner investigator. Poor, poor thing. Oh my God, did she get caught up in a lot of mistakes. And she is the one that supposedly took the death photo of Michael Jackson that we all saw and that many people believe is fake. Well, her mistakes were her fingerprints were found on medications. She said she didn't go into Michael's master bedroom in which the other bedroom was the hospital room. She said she didn't go in there, but there's a picture of her inside the master bathroom in which you gotta go through the master bedroom to get to the master bathroom. She was questioned about a supposed saline bag that was ripped that supposedly had a bottle of propofol turned upside down that Alberto Alvarez said he took from the IV stand. Anyway, she didn't take a picture of the propofol in that bag. And guess what? Alberto Alvarez's fingerprints weren't on any medications whatsoever. So I told you guys something was up with Alberto Alvarez. Miss Elisa Fleek. She did not even write about the propofol inside of the cut saline bag until almost two years later. She destroys her notes. So I don't know what you can believe out of the testimony from Elisa Fleek. 
We also heard from a gentleman by the name of Dan Anderson, who is a coroner supervisor. And he talked about the findings of what type of drugs that were in supposed Michael Joseph Jackson's body. And he talked about femoral blood, which has to do with blood from the leg. He talked about heart blood. He talked about eye fluid, in which you can detect a lot of different drugs. Well, I remember there was a lot of talk right around the time of the supposed burial. The reason why they waited 71 days, guys, <laughs> to bury Michael Jackson was because they took a piece of his brain out and they didn't want to bury him without that piece of the brain back in the body. Well, nobody has mentioned anything about the findings of that sample of the brain tissues. Now, was that a true story or was that a media story? I don't know, but we haven't heard anything as of yet about any testing of any brain tissue. Now, the key to this case is supposed to be that Michael Jackson swallowed or drank some of the medicines that were responsible for his death. So therefore they talked about stomach contents. But I remember from EMT, paramedic Blunt, he said that they did a tube ventilation into Mr. Jackson's stomach. And what that does, it cleans out the stomach. I'm not sure what all that means, but I'm sure we'll find out soon. I have just learned some wonderful information that supports the death hoax in regards to Elvis. If you read Suicide, Did Michael Jackson Fake His Death to Save His Life? There's a whole chapter on the Michael Elvis connection. And also, I spent a lot of time in the documentary Alive, Is Michael Jackson Really Dead? Talking about the similarities with Michael and Elvis, but I've learned some new similarities that are just gonna blow your mind. Good evening. Elvis Presley died today. He was 42. Apparently it was a heart attack. He was found at his home in Memphis, not breathing. His road manager tried to revive him. He failed. A hospital tried to revive him. It failed. There's been lots of interviews questioning people that were around Elvis during that time, and I heard this. No, he was upstairs in the bedroom, and I went upstairs to talk to him. He wasn't breathing. I got there. Was he lying on the bed? Yeah. But other reports say that Elvis died in the bathroom on the floor. So here we go. Was he on the bed? Was he on the floor? Now the bed and the floor are also very confusing for everybody that's watching the death trial. Now Dr. Murray is reporting that he gave Michael a sedative at two, at five, at 10. Now this can't just be a coincidence, can it? A dangerous and destructive routine of medication was administered on a steady schedule to Elvis and his insistence. He received the drugs in three separate doses that were called attacks. The first attack was usually delivered between 2 and 3 a.m. After sleeping for a few hours, Elvis would awaken for attack two. That would last for several hours. Now you're in the morning hours. You know, you're looking at 10 or 11. Then it'd be attack three. And for the heartbeat of the death hoax, the Joe and Joseph for Michael's middle name, just like Aaron with one A for Elvis and Aaron with two A's for Elvis, which one is the correct name? Well, I know for a fact Michael's real name is Michael Joe Jackson, not Joseph Jackson. And that's really who has died. This court is really uh, on trial for the death of Michael Joseph Jackson, and I don't know who that is. Now, why does this lady, the court clerk, have the middle name of Joe? And her name has quotes around it, just in case we miss it. The elephant in the room, of course, I believe is the Joe and Joseph. And I did have a chance to bring up the elephant in the room, and the next thing I know, boom, the elephant in the room is recorded for everyone out there who's watching the trial to see. Many of you know I was a reporter in the 2005 Michael Jackson false allegation that he was a child molester. And during that time, we kept hearing that we were gonna hear from Michael, hear from Michael. And we did, but Michael did not take the stand. And now, people say, we're gonna hear from Murray, we're gonna hear from Murray, and we have, but Dr. Murray has not taken the stand as of yet. And we're hearing from them through 
a recording, something that they had previously recorded. So we're listening to Dr. Murray's police tape. And in this tape, he was describing what happened that day, what he gave Michael Jackson, how he became employed with Michael Jackson, how he met Michael Jackson. And in the courtroom was Jermaine Jackson, Reby Jackson, and Reby's daughter. And right then and there, when the whole room is quiet, listening to this police interview of Dr. Murray's, Reby Jackson and her daughter get up and they walk out of the courtroom and they went into the court area in which where the attorneys are and the jurors are and the judge admonished them. And then I talked to some witnesses out in the hallway and this is what they saw. Well, we're not quite sure what happened, but while we were sitting in there, the young lady that was with her, who I later found out was her daughter, walked up the hallway and went into the bathroom area and when she came out she was very upset she was crying and I believe it was Majestic that called Reby over and um, that's all we know is that she was upset I, I it was she was very upset that's all I know was the daughter crying yes I didn't know it was her daughter but I found out later it was her daughter she was very upset well, this is Pearl Jr. for MichaelJacksonInsider.com, and I will be back for week three of the Conrad Murray manslaughter trial. Suicide. Did Michael Jackson fake his death to save his life?